Hello and uh, greetings, Blacksburg. Uh, welcome uh, to uh, the uh, online recorded uh, version of the first of three public meetings uh, to be held uh, in Blacksburg uh, for the uh, downtown Blacksburg strategy. Um, this is the first meeting. This one is um, largely about uh, providing you, some uh, the community, some initial thoughts, uh, an analysis uh, on your community and what um, uh, is, is understood to be some of the critical issues that uh, impact the downtown. And, um, and, and this is about getting feedback from you all. At the public meeting, uh, after the presentation, which takes about 30 minutes, uh, people were uh, encouraged to go to different boards and different stations and, and provide uh, input in a bunch of d different interactive ways. For those of you uh, listening at home uh, at this online version, uh, there's a survey. Uh, there are actually a couple of surveys uh, online uh, that you're, uh, we encourage you and invite you to uh, take. So there's still ways for you to participate uh, uh, and provide responses to this presentation. And again, there will be two more presentations uh, and public meetings associated with those that we encourage you to attend. So this presentation um, and this process uh, in which we're... Uh, uh, you know, putting together a strategy for downtown Blacksburg. There's these three critical issues that, you know, we've already done some interviews of stakeholders and we, we understand these are going to be three critical issues relating to downtown. It's, it's growth, um, cost of housing, town identity. Growth, the university is growing, the town itself is growing, the non-student population is growing as well. Um, and uh, how's the, how does the community accommodate this? Cost of housing is a concern that's been raised and it's a legitimate concern. We'll, we'll share with you some of our analysis. Um, and town identity, um, what does this town mean to you and what critical elements of it would you uh, like to hold on to and carry into the future? Um, these are all important elements and uh, uh, that we're going to be uh, talking about and they all affect one another. Uh, okay, um, you know, too much emphasis in any one area uh, could negatively impact the other two, right? So it's uh, not necessarily about choosing one over the other two. It's about finding balance, uh, you know, and um, and this is the beginning of a process of, of trying to see if there are ways to uh, do that. And of course, downtown plays a, a, a critical role. Uh, it's perhaps even the fulcrum um, as it relates to some of these issues. Um, Downtown is impacted by all three of these things, and there may be things that can be done in downtown. In fact, there can be things uh, that can be done in downtown um, that affect these. Downtown can play a role in, in balancing or rebalancing the three of these. So this is the kind of these are kind of the, the, the big picture elements that we'd like to address that we're going to talk to you about today, um, and we'd like to see seek ways to address these uh, over the course of this uh, process um, that will uh, last roughly six months with three public meetings. Uh, what we're gonna talk about over the next uh, 30 minutes or so, um, I'm gonna share with you a little bit who we are as the consulting team, uh, why we're here, uh, not, not just us the consulting team, why the community's here, why, why now, why downtown strategy now? Uh, what is the process? How is this going to unfold over uh, you know, a period of six to nine months? Uh, then we're gonna share with you our planning analysis. Here's some, there's some things, here's our analysis of your community. Uh, first, thinking about those things that we just talked about, growth, uh, cost of housing, and town identity, and then some downtown-specific analysis. We want to provide that to you uh, before you go and take the survey um, and, and, and participate um, because we want to gauge your reaction to these things. We want to we arm you with this information, and then we want you to go take the survey and hopefully show up for subsequent public meetings uh, and tell us what you think. So who we are, uh, our firm is Development Strategies. Um, and uh, as our name implies, we have uh, expertise in development. And we look at that, we take a, a broad uh, view of what um, um, development is. That's uh, uh, economic development, and that relates to job growth and innovation and investment. That's real estate development. And now we're talking about buildings and how we use the land and um, 
uh, kind of the, the physical environment in which we occupy and we think of as, as, as part of uh, cities and towns. Um, and then there's community development, and that's about you. That's about people. That's about um, what kind of community do you want to have? Um, what is important to you uh, as we think about economic development and real estate development? Um, what really holds this community together, and what are those uh, critical traits uh, to it? And what what do we want the public realm where people interact to look like? And and sometimes, depending on the community, we're also thinking about people-based investments, um, which are important. Uh, we've, we have uh, a lot of experience working all over. We work in a lot of uh, university, uh, uh, so-called town and gown uh, environments. Um, often, um, you know, working at those seams between the, the, the town and the university um, and, and, and thinking about where those two uh, places interact, but also looking more broadly at uh, university goals and, and town or city goals uh, and trying to align them. And I can tell you the, some of the issues and opportunities that you're facing are, are not unique uh, to you, although some of them may be more acute in Blacksburg, but uh, a lot of um, flagship universities are growing uh, and the economies around them are growing, and that's, uh, you know, causing a lot of towns to grapple with cost of housing issues and uh, town identity uh, issues. So uh, what you're facing is not unique, and it's not easy um, because the solutions are generally um, not silver bullet solutions. They're things that require balancing uh, of different uh, uh, different elements, uh, issues, and opportunities that uh, your community faces. Um, so our broader team uh, includes us development strategies. I'm Matt Wetley. I'm the, the principal in charge and the project uh, director of this. Um, Julie Cooper uh, is the project manager uh, of this, and she's a policy strategist. Uh, we have on our team Arnett Muldrow and Associates. Trip Muldrow is a strategic advisor. He has worked on a number of planning efforts in Blacksburg uh, for the better part of two decades uh, has great knowledge and, and great history of this place. Uh, and MKSK is a, a frequent teaming partner of ours. Um, they're going to be focusing on urban design uh, as we uh, work through community goals and aspirations and, and maybe find a few places in downtown to uh, think about uh, the physical form of the place. Uh, they're going to help us conceptualize some, some alternatives um, so that um, we can put something in front of you, the community, and say, uh, what development alternatives do you like and where? Why are we here? Why are we all here? Why are we talking about a downtown plan in, in this time and, and, and moment? Well, strategic planning is something uh, any community or organization uh, needs to do. Uh, you know, we ask the question, who does strategic planning? Essentially, anyone uh, who plans around uh, uh, plans on being around and, and successful uh, in, in 10 years from now. So, uh, all kinds of organizations do a strategic planning, not just uh, cities and towns, uh, but uh, businesses, small and large, uh, institutions, foundations, nonprofits, um, because the world is always changing. And we need to think uh, every five or 10 years, okay, what has changed and what, what are our goals and what do we want to prioritize and, and what do we want to invest in? Given the best uh, information available now uh, and thinking about the future, uh, how do we want to focus our finite resources? Um, the strategic plan uh, is serving the uh, uh, comprehensive planning effort that uh, has been going on uh, for a while. Um, and uh, it, it serves it. The, the geography of the strategic plan is more focused on the downtown. The comp plan or comprehensive plan uh, is more uh, town-wide, uh, but we can also uh, pick critical issues to focus on as well. Okay, so there's geographic focus and there's focus on uh, critical issues. So it's um, growth, cost of housing, town identity, downtown in place. Are there other elements that need to get added into this? I think we're going we're gonna to find that out through this process with you and some of the feedback that we get from the survey, but uh, we know that these are going to be some critical issues we're going to need to talk about. Uh, and that's going to help inform the comprehensive plan. Strategic planning and master planning, how are these different? Well, um, master planning can help inform a strategic plan. Um, a strategic plan differs from a master plan in that we're not going to physically draw out um, every inch of this downtown. Uh, we are going to pick some, some sites for some focused uh, uh, physical planning, but it's kind of, it's about addressing some bigger issues, identifying opportunities and, 
and and how and, and challenges and how we want to address them. Um, this is an opportunity f to find points of cooperation between the, the town and the, the university, between the public sector and private sector, uh, between residents uh, and nearby neighborhoods and the business community. Um, this, is a, this is a forum uh, to see if we can uh, have a, well, to have a dialogue and see if we can find some, some uh, co points of cooperation and alignment. Uh, it's also about synthesizing uh, many of the previous efforts that have occurred. Um, and then ultimately, it's about uh, prioritization. Uh, we can't do everything at once. What do we want to do first? What do we want to do second? And, and how do we as a community adapt to change? Um, there have been many efforts done over the last uh, 15 or so years, uh, starting with the downtown master plan in 2001. Uh, there's been uh, two uh, economic development strategies done since then, a retail study, parking management plan, a downtown housing study uh, that we uh, development strategies worked on, um, as well as a bicycle master plan. So there's a lot of uh, elements that are going to help inform uh, this uh, strategic plan, a lot of studies and analysis that have been done. And from some of these things, and, and in particular, the downtown master plan, um, th th this truly does guide and shape future investment, okay? So a lot of public investment recommendations came out of um, that document that have gotten done, okay? Uh, the Main Street streetscape, the Prices Fork Roundabout, uh, Market Square Park and the Farmer's Market, uh, the College Avenue streetscape. So a lot, of, a lot of public investments can stem out of these things. And a lot of private investment and institutional investment, uh, whether it's the Moss Arts Center, um, whether it's uh, some new uh, infill housing or mixed-use development, uh, truly between uh, private, public, and, and uh, university investment, a lot of things have happened uh, over the last 15 years. So um, it's time to think about what might happen uh, and, and, and get out ahead of what might happen over the next 5 and 10 and 15 years um, and, and be proactive uh, in shaping the, the future course of your community. Some current efforts, some things that we know are going to happen. Uh, the university uh, is uh, investing in a creativity and innovation district, uh, essentially where the university and the town meet. Uh, we'll tell you a little more about what that's going to be. Uh, the old middle school site uh, development proposal is, is moving through the, the review process. Um, this downtown process is not about, uh, you know, guiding and shaping that site. It's moving through a development process, but certainly how the town uh, and downtown uh, reacts to it, uh, addresses it in terms of physical form and other things. These, these are things we can talk about, uh, you know, at the, at the edges of that development. Um, and other things, uh, the town is planning on investing in Progress Street uh, as, a, a, um, uh, as a future, uh, more bike and pedestrian friendly thoroughfare. On the Progress Street lot, uh, currently offers parking uh, for downtown businesses, the town owns that and uh, has plans of doing a parking garage at some point to accommodate more cars and address some of the traffic issues that the town is having. In addition, there are other uh, potential private investments that are going to happen. The uh, Baptist Church site, which owns a Baptist Church, which owns a pretty substantial property, is looking to develop this at some point in the future. Uh, what would this community like that to be? Um, these are things we want to talk about in this process. Ultimately, in any community and in any process like this, part of what we're talking about, a big part, is change, uh, which is a scary word. It's a scary word for any, any community, especially when you, you live in it and you love it the way it is. And yet, um, one thing that's certain is that change is coming. We're going to talk to you about some of the things that are uh, coming down the line, and, and we've talked about some things, and it's, um, you know, this is something s cities, towns, communities continually have to do. They have to uh, adapt uh, to changing circumstances in order to survive and flourish, and we want to talk about some of those trends and, and think about how to address those. Ultimately, in any kind of planning process like this, uh, we're asking two questions um, about a site, or in this case, the downtown. Uh, what do you want it to be, and what can it be? Now, what can it be? Um, we have professional expertise. Uh, we're going to be thinking about things like economics and economic trends, uh, real estate markets, 
Um, we're going to be thinking about best practices and public policy and urban design to sort of think about what this downtown can be. Uh, we're asking you, the community, what do you want it to be? This is more about your aspirations, your goals, uh, your vision for what this community is. And we're looking for the intersection of those two things. We're not going to tell you what your community uh, needs to be based on what it can be. Uh, but we also don't want to um, uh, create a plan that's going to sit on a shelf because it's unrealistic. Uh, we want to we want to align uh, what you want with what uh, this town can uh, and downtown can realistically be, and that requires yes education and feedback and sharing of alternatives. And most importantly, dialogue. So we want to have a dialogue with you all uh, over um, over these uh, next several months. So process. How is this going to unfold? Well, essentially, we're at the uh, there's there's four steps. First step is understand, and, and we're at this. This is the culmination of this, uh, this public meeting. Um, so we've done the understand phase. We've done a bunch of analysis, looking at uh, the real estate market and the physical form of the community. We're going to share with you some of that uh, in just a moment. Uh, we're presenting that to you, and we're going to look for your feedback. Uh, we're going to collect the feedback that we get from you from the public meeting, from the surveys uh, that are online, and we're going to come back to you all with some alternatives. Uh, here's some ideas on how to address some things. Uh, and then we're going to get, uh, and that's the step two, the strategize phase, have another public meeting, get your feedback. What do you think? We're going to take that. We're going to refine those ideas. Uh, and then we're going to need to make some decisions, okay? We're going to come back with a refinement of uh, some preferred alternatives. We'll present that to you all. Um, and then from there, so that'll be the final public meeting. Then we, you know, write a document that uh, will go before uh, town council, uh, which will have recommendations you know, on anything from, you know, future land use to maybe policies that address um, cost of housing, town identity, and so on. Um, at the, again, at the end of the public meeting, we had folks go to stations. Uh, we had them fill out cards. We had them put dots on maps showing us places they use, don't use. Uh, we had open-ended questions uh, asking folks what they'd, uh, like to see and um, of course there's the surveys that are online so still an opportunity to contribute there uh, and participate and again there will be future public meetings you can attend so now let's get into planning analysis before we ask for your input we want to share with you our analysis uh, of, of uh, downtown Blacksburg and um, speaking of feedback um, we do have some, we have public participation from the comprehensive planning effort, uh, which has been uh, occurring in 2016 and 2017. One of the questions that was asked in that survey, uh, what would you most like to see happen in Blacksburg over the next 10 years? Greater diversity of restaurants, entertainment, retail, and shopping, more affordable housing options, greater protection of natural resources, um, decreased traffic congestion, and greater diversity of job opportunities. So uh, so we have some sense of some community-wide aspirations. We're gonna be asking a lot of questions as they pertain to the downtown. Uh, so again, we, we want your, you know, your feedback, but uh, kind of that framework where we're talking about growth and cost of housing and town identity, a lot of these issues are tied to those, those things, okay? So, so, um, so uh, let's get into it. So looking at this, this is kind of our framework. I'm gonna talk about all three of these components and then get into some downtown specific stuff. So first, when we talk about growth, uh, there's kind of two sides of this. One's about jobs, innovation, talent, education. A lot of this relates to the university and university investment. Um, and then on the town side, you know, thinking about development and infrastructure and the economy and land use and, and future growth. So we'll talk about both of those things uh, now. On the university side, uh, over the, you know over the next five years, essentially the university is in the process of adding five thousand more students, five hundred to a thousand more faculty and staff. So more students, but also um, uh, you know faculty and staff. That's another five hundred to to thousand folks. Uh, you know possibly another five hundred to thousand homes uh, that will need to get added. Um, you know in in and around Blacksburg. Um, the university is investing in a creativity and innovation district um, that's going to bring new new square footage to kind of the seam where the uh, town and university meet. That's going to be new housing, but also moving a lot of their creative programs, art and architecture and these kinds of things, kind of the edge of the university to encourage more 
um, interaction uh, and uh, um, uh, between the town and, and university. Um, and also um, things like business incubators. We'll, we'll talk a bit more about that, but creating uh, more dynamism, more startup and investment, uh, startup culture uh, that'll lead to more investment in this uh, community. Uh, and, uh, you know, potentially uh, diversify uh, the jobs in this community. Um, this is something that uh, a lot of uh, universities, a lot of Virginia Tech's peers, uh, research institutions are doing, uh, investing in um, uh, innovation districts and innovation district infrastructure, and it's usually where the town and or city and university meet. And that's because of... Um, um, that's because of the opportunities that it creates, uh, the synergies that it can create between, uh, you know, private sector growth and, and university investment. And has a lot to do with the trends in the way the economy is changing. So, uh, for example, uh, one of the things we've learned over the last 20 or 30 years is, is the importance of place, especially in the knowledge economy. So a lot of jobs, a lot of businesses grow because different people from with different from different silos or different uh, different knowledge bases get to talking and bouncing ideas off of each other and it turns out um, you know even though um, you know we can email people all over the world we still tend to share ideas bounce ideas off of people that we know that we physically see and interact with and develop trust with and that occurs more uh, in physical places so you know we see people that share patents tend to live uh, close by, uh, even though we can email and, and do video conferences and all of those things, business travel has gone up. Um, and a lot of what innovation districts are trying to do is, is break down the old traditional silos. Uh, people that don't typically talk and communicate a lot, your sort of tech science and research folks, your, your business management, on, uh, MBA and entrepreneurs, uh, and your designers. These are folks that typically come out of different silos in school and that continues into the real world. But a lot of innovation occurs where you get these different folks talking. So you think about what it took to create the iPhone. You needed those tech uh, and science people. And uh, they needed to commercialize their project. They needed funding from entrepreneurs, right? Uh, but they also needed to design it well so that it functioned well in an intuitive way. And that it was marketable. And that's where you get the seeds of innovation. So innovation districts are really about uh, breaking down silos, aligning these different people, and you know, thinking about one of those stated goals in the comp plan, this is one of those things that can lead to greater private sector growth, greater diversity of jobs, greater, uh, a greater amount of non-university jobs, and um, that actually can be a really healthy thing for everyone. And the reason is, uh, here again, 30, you know, 20, 30 years of research, what we found is cities and towns and regions um, that have a lot of small businesses and startups uh, tend to, over the long term, um, be more resilient, uh, have higher incomes, be more economically thriving than those that are defend dependent on one or two big organizations or big companies, it's big company towns. Um, they're just not as dynamic. They're not as um, resilient uh, to sweeping trends in the economy. Um, and whereas a lot of small businesses are, are more adaptable. So universities are recognizing this. They need this. They need this entrepreneur and startup culture. Um, and a lot of towns and cities are recognizing this too. And so that's the aspiration for uh, innovation districts. Uh, also, uh, then thinking about town growth. Uh, over the next 10 or so years, uh, 4,000 more people uh, are expected to uh, come. And... Uh, over 4,400 more jobs uh, are, are going to be added. So um, um, that's pretty, pretty substantial. Um, and um, looking at sort of, uh, we don't have job projections at this level of granularity specific for Blacksburg, but we have it for Montgomery and County and, and Radford. And you can see where these jobs are going to, you know, largely, largely going to be in things like uh, professional, scientific, and technical services. Um, and you'd kind of expect that in a, a university town, especially with some innovation infrastructure. Uh, real estate, and that's something you expect to see in a growing uh, market, such as Blacksburg. Accommodation and food services, and uh, state and local government employment. Uh, and the way that government keeps this data, that includes Virginia Tech and Virginia Tech jobs. Uh, manufacturing jobs are, are projected to decline. So we wanted to help uh, help you all visualize what growth uh, means. 
you know, a thousand, two thousand, four thousand people, households, jobs. I mean, that's, you know, it can feel pretty abstract. Um, we wanted to help you visualize what, what growth could look like. And by the way, it can take on different forms and that has different implications. A single family housing um, has a certain look and density and feel to it. Um, townhomes uh, built at a, a higher density of 10 to 15 acres. Uh, low density apartments, 25 units per acre. High density apartments, 60 to 100 units per acre. Each of these have, uh, you know, they provide a different look and feel. They have different implications as well. So we wanted to help you visualize this and we wanted to do a visualization and sometimes we'll, we'll use football fields and we'll say, you know, uh, you know, the amount of development that you have is going to occupy, you know, five football fields. But we wanted to use something here that we thought you could relate to. And we thought about the original 16 blocks of, of this uh, town, uh, each of which uh, is about 1.8 acres. And so looking at, you know, we wanted to say, Okay, if we add a thousand units of, of housing over the next ten years, um, what could that look like at different densities? How much space would that occupy? So, uh, we've done this exercise, and if a thousand units were added at at you know the uh, lowest density that uh, your zoning ordinance allows, four units per acre, um, you would need enough land uh, land that would be equivalent to uh, about eight and a half squares. Uh, or eight and a half of the original 16 squares, okay, uh, and, or, or 250 acres. Conversely, if it's townhomes, I need 66 acres, uh, just the equivalent of just a little over two of those original 16 squares of development. Uh, and then at 25 and 60 units per acre, uh, even less land, right? 17 acres of land are needed to accommodate 1,000 housing units at 60 units per acre. So, uh, we wanted to, you know, to help see how much space this could occupy. And these are choices. Um, and, you know, by the way, you know, no one community is going to add 100%, you know, high density apartments or 100% uh, percent, uh, low density single family housing. Uh, but to the degree you can find a mix or a blend, it's going to require less land. Uh, and here's kind of what those different type development typologies could look like. Um, we're going to ask you a little later, uh, and in the survey, what um, architectural styles you like. So don't get to, you know, if you don't like these styles, let, let us, we'll, you'll have an opportunity to tell us what you like, but we want you to be able to conceptualize what these different densities look like. So let's move on to cost of housing. And this is really about, you know, workforce and affordable housing. We'll define what that is. It's about cost of living and policy and equity and, 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 and quality of life, okay? And we wanted to draw some distinctions. Affordable housing is something that, um, uh, you know, is def generally served by government programs, and the primary goal is equity, uh, social, uh, social equity, and it's about, um, you know, providing, uh, you know, quality housing to low and moderate income households that otherwise can't afford it. Workforce housing is something different. This targets sort of middle income households, um, and the price is generally set by market forces that we'll talk about. And here the goal is about livability. This is, you know, middle income households. We're talking about, you know, school teachers and policemen and, and firemen and, and nurses. And so this is more about livability. I think we've, we've got a statistic. I think roughly one out of four people that work in Blacksburg live in Blacksburg. Um, and this is about what kind of community do you want? Do you want a community where uh, sort of middle income folks can't afford to live here and have to drive in here? Uh, that's going to add traffic uh, and that, um, you know, um, uh, that creates, a, again, a community where uh, maybe this great place isn't livable and affordable to the, the majority of folks. Or, you know, do we want to try to look at some ways to address these issues? So we're, we're, we're asking you for your, your input on this and, and which of these are your priorities, and, and maybe they both are. Um, and the concerns are very real and very legitimate here. So, you know, if you look at the typical metrics on here, this is, you know, a typical uh, city or town we might work in. Uh, you'd expect some amount of folks to um, need subsidized or affordable uh, housing because they, they, you know, they don't earn enough to uh, afford quality housing uh, on, with their incomes. Uh, you've got workforce housing uh, and, and your, your workforce, and that's people that are in between you know, 60 and 120% uh, of the, you know, the average income in your area. 
than upscale and luxury. In your community, you know, the median household income is about $25,000, which is it's low and that's skewed by all the students you have who have relatively low incomes. Uh, but what's interesting is um, the housing that's coming online tends to be, uh, new housing tends to be priced at about $270,000. That's affordable to somebody who makes um, 88, uh, you know, has a household income of $88,000, uh, which is a pretty high income in Blacksburg. And so, you know, the housing that's coming online is only really affordable to a, a small percentage of you all. And who's really kind of getting squeezed are those, those folks in that workforce. People earn between twenty five and 53000 um, It's hard to find housing that's affordable in Blacksburg. So this is a legitimate concern, and it's driven largely by um, this uh, student dynamic um, where you have a lot of folks earning relatively low income, and it's a lot of students, and yet at the same time, um, you know, median home value in Blacksburg is 31% is higher than the U.S. average. Um, and, uh, you know, this is driven by the affordability of students whose incomes appear low, but their household income, i.e. their parents' income, um, student loans, things like that, uh, really enhance their buying power, and they're able to price uh, other folks out of the market. Here's the thing, and here's the real challenge. So I told you affordable housing is, uh, the prices are dictated by government programs, but workforce housing is dictated largely by market forces. And what do we mean by that? Well, we think about supply and demand. We look at this town, and you're in a valley, and there aren't many places to grow outward, right? And as more and more people want to move to this place, because it's so desirable and there's great, you know, there's university jobs and these sorts of things. Um, if you don't grow somewhere, if there's more people coming in but no additional housing is added, that's going to make the housing that's here get more and more expensive. It's going to push prices up and up and up um, because no additional supply is, is met. Conversely, if we find some places to add housing that can alleviate some of that demand pressure, okay, uh, but there's, you know, generally one way to go and that's up. And so um, are there places that are appropriate to build more densely uh, in downtown and in Blacksburg uh, that can help alleviate some of the cost pressures that this community is, is going to face? Moving on to town identity. Now we're talking about things like density and sprawl and architecture and form and your history and culture and preferences, your neighborhoods and streets. Uh, we're at, we asked in the public meeting, gave people an opportunity to um, respond and, and also on the survey, how do you define uh, town identity? We, we want to know what are the what are the critical elements? Um, are they more the, the physical elements or is it more some of the, the, the qualitative uh, ingredients? Um, because you do have some great physical components uh, that we want to acknowledge, uh, you know, the Lyric Theater and, and, you know, kind of that stretch of Main Street with those, uh, you know, old buildings and, you know, the, uh, the storefronts and the kind of that, uh, you know, the brick buildings that creates this great small town atmosphere. And you've got some real uh, gems uh, architectural in, the, in this community. I also want to talk about town identity as it relates to density and height. Because, you know, restricting density and height doesn't mean keeping out development. Uh, it means there's an alternative and that's sprawl and traffic. That's more development uh, outside your community. And there's real consequences to think about. Uh, multifamily housing, as we shared, uh, can save a lot of land area. Based on our study, if it's all built at 60 units an acre, uh, as opposed to four units an acre, it can save you, uh, it can be built on 93% less land area. Uh, multifamily housing, uh, especially when it's close to employment, can also, uh, it, it will not bring as much traffic with it as sprawl does, because people uh, will walk to uh, employment or um, uh, certain services or restaurants uh, more, and that'll reduce their vehicle trips and the number of cars on the road. Um, there's other things that, that relate to town identity, things in the planning toolkit. Um, you know, density is one thing to think about, but also architecture. I mean, are there architectural styles, uh, as we think about single family housing or apartments or office, that, um, you know, uh, maybe if they were provided, but the architecture was was pleasing and consistent with town character and what you all want for your community, uh, you know, are there ways to allow development so long as it's uh, in line with your preferences as a community for what architecture you you prefer? So the things to think about neighborhood transitions. The project we worked on that was um, 
built to a certain density along the uh, university community's uh, main street, um, but transitioned down from five stories to three so that it wasn't overly imposing uh, on the neighborhood. And also, you know, are there, are there ways to find, create some, some of those intimate spaces uh, within new development? Uh, that keeps with uh, some of the character elements that you like. These are things we want to we want to hear from you. Ultimately, we want to ask you where could growth go in downtown Blacksburg? Uh, if it can't go everywhere, uh, can it go somewhere? And and where should that be? And and what should it look like? And and um, these are these are questions we want to want to see if we can answer in this process. So now let's let's move to downtown. Let's talk about your downtown, uh, and let me provide you some of our our planning analysis. So, you know, we say there's sort of six components to uh, a great downtown, uh, livability, walkability, vibrancy, accessibility, dynamism, and anchors and amenities. And Blacksburg has uh, ingredients in, in all of these areas and has done a great job in, in many of these areas. Uh, and yet there's room for improvement in, in many of these. So we, we want to sort of talk to you about this and give you some of our analysis before we send you off to uh, fill out uh, surveys. So livability, that's really about the history and character of your place. It's about public space. And it's about having human-scaled places, okay? A livable place is one that's not just designed for automobiles, but uh, designed for people. And, um, you know, you've got some great uh, history and character elements that we talked about. Um, you have this original 16 blocks, you know, the first part of the city. Um, and we've mapped out um, what have been determined to be contributing structures, uh, structures that uh, contribute to the history of, of, of uh, Blacksburg. And you can see where a lot of them are, uh, kind of in and around Progress Street and in the original 16. Okay, so this is part of your history. Uh, and then there's the public space and human-scaled component. And, you know, College Avenue is a great example uh, of that. Uh, really fantastic, uh, walkable uh, streets. And then you've got some areas kind of around the corner. Uh, that perform really relatively well and and um, some nice outdoor dining places and a few of those out of out of the way places those alleys those um, those smaller more intimate spaces that make can can um, maybe in and of themselves aren't that impressive but cumulatively it it adds interest to a downtown and so we've sort of identified those places that are are really strong uh, in terms of livability College Avenue kind of the town center area. Uh, and South Main. Uh, these are good uh, livable spaces. Then we move on to walkability, and you know this is how this is about how easy it is to cross the street. It's about those street side zones and wide sidewalks, and how comfortable it is to walk. And it's about you know bike and pedestrian systems, um, and you know alternative ways of getting around uh, in your community. Again, College Avenue is a great example, and we see some examples along uh, Main Street. Uh, efforts to improve uh, the quality of crossings uh, and so on. So there's been great progress. But once we get off of Main Street in some of the directions, and some of these pictures are in the original 16, uh, you see the uh, bike and pedestrian infrastructure really break down, um, kind of narrow, almost unusable sidewalks, uh, or in some cases, no sidewalks at all. So definitely room for improvement in, in, in some walkability areas. And in fact, we highlighted in this kind of light blue or teal color, uh, some areas that aren't so walkable, kind of on North Main Street, uh, has more to do with the auto orientation of a lot of those businesses. And then, you know, kind of more on the, the southern side, uh, South Main uh, itself is good, but as soon as you kind of get off the street, uh, off Main Street, uh, things start to break down in terms of walkability pretty quickly. And of course, there's Progress Street, which, again, the town is uh, pl has plans to invest in as kind of the next uh, walkable uh, bikeable street um, and uh, looking for your feedback and thoughts uh, on that. Vibrancy, you know, I'll define this as you, you go to a downtown and you see lots of people on the street uh, walking on the sidewalks and that's a vibrant place. And what contributes to that? Uh, active storefronts, having housing downtown, uh, expressions of culture and food and entertainment, having art and the different events. These are things that have get people downtown uh, and contribute to, to vibrancy. You've got some great uh, entrepreneurs, some startups, uh, and the, the, we're starting to see the, the craft movement uh, uh, emerging in Blacksburg, and that's really exciting. And we see some, some public art efforts uh, as well. Um, 
uh, having those uh, those those uh, events that bring people downtown is great. Step announce uh, a great event um, that we talk to a number of people that a number of people look forward to every year. And the housing housing now has been challenged. So uh, has been a challenge uh, because getting uh, housing uh, downtown will definitely contribute to number of people that you see downtown and contribute to its functionality as a it's kind of a neighborhood. Um, and so far, um, what we you know, what is easy to build are, you know, is student housing and uh, game day condos. And and the challenge is getting uh, non non student housing uh, developed in your downtown. And the challenge is this. Essentially student housing is more profitable. So uh, developers, lending institutions can pay more uh, for land to develop uh, student housing, and that drives up the cost of land uh, to the point that it makes it difficult or infeasible, we'll say, for developers to build non-student housing. So that's a challenge, and so the only thing we've seen other than student housing is kind of these game day condos, these, these very high-end or upscale condos. Uh, but nevertheless, a lot of downtowns are trying to figure out ways to invite downtown housing, whether it's modern uh, or traditional, whether it's new construction or making use of existing buildings. Uh, anything that can be done to get uh, more people uh, living uh, downtown, uh, you know, and 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 uh, particularly non-students is going to contribute to the vibrancy of this place. Uh, storefronts also contributes uh, vibrancy uh, to place, and we've got some some great energy on College Avenue and that College Avenue extension uh, on the other side of Main Street as well. So let's talk about accessibility, because. Um, a lot of issues, challenges, and opportunities uh, relating to downtown Blacksburg uh, relate to accessibility. And, you know, that can involve transportation and getting around. It can involve finding your way uh, around. And it, we also take a, a broader view of accessibility to include, um, you know, a downtown that, that has different districts that are understandable. Oh, okay, this is where... Uh, hospitality and hotels are oh this is where you know the startup scene is and this is a, more of a residential district those things uh, add to the coherence uh, and uh, understandability and accessibility of the place and um, downtown both on the university and the town end have uh, added uh, wayfinding signage to help people get around so those have been great efforts uh, the downtown uh, strategy uh, that we did recommended uh, thinking about um, different potential districts and and that's something uh, we want to try to uh, explore uh, in this planning process um, you know what are the identity of some of these or what could the identity of, of some different uh, districts and areas in the downtown be right now you've got this sort of core area that I think is pretty understandable as downtown are there places to the north south east west that uh, might develop an identity uh, over time as well Parking. Parking is a big uh, issue as it relates to accessibility. Uh, you know, a, a highly accessible downtown is one that you can find places to park and park your automobile and then get out and, and walk and enjoy that downtown. And so there's a number of parking lots. Some of them are available uh, only in the evenings and the weekends. Um, the town, uh, if you see that number that says P2, uh, the town owns this lot. Uh, again, that they're looking to do some structured parking on that would, I think, alleviate some some traffic uh, issues uh, over time. Here's kind of, you can see it on an aerial. Uh, this is something we're going to be looking at in greater detail. Uh, what could that garage look like and uh, how does it interface with the community? Uh, you know, it's a great idea to have more parking uh, to serve the businesses and, and get people off the streets. Uh, how, how do we do that in a way that's sensitive to the community? Um, Main Street itself, as we think about transportation, it's not going to get any wider. It's really the only north-south thoroughfare through downtown. And uh, because it's not going to get wider, it's not going to accommodate any more cars than it is today. And so that means alternative modes of transportation need to be explored. It could be transit, uh, could be bike and pedestrian infrastructure. Any of these things can, has, have been proven to take cars off the street and alleviate traffic congestion. Right now, transit's primarily used by students. Um, are there other stops, other locations that it can make of greater frequency of use uh, or, or of, of stops? Uh, are there things that can be done to get more of you uh, non-students to use transit? Because uh, to the degree that happens, uh, you know, uh, we will 
uh, be able to reduce the number of cars on the street. Um, and then the bike and pedestrian infrastructure. A lot of cities are really, and towns are really starting to figure out how to uh, introduce usable bike infrastructure, linking it to employment centers, shopping centers, um, in a, you know, a, a pedestrian friendly and livable way uh, that makes it very inviting to use bikes. And we think in a university town such as Blacksburg, uh, we, we think we're confident there are people who genuinely would take uh, biking, uh, would bike to work or to the store uh, sometimes um, if the right infrastructure is provided. Uh, but we want to hear from you. Is this something you'd be interested in? Is this something you'd use? Uh, and of course, you've got the Huckleberry Trail, which is just fantastic. And um, if we can um, create bike and pedestrian infrastructure that takes uh, cars off the street, that's fantastic and maybe the primary goal, but we can also think about linking it to uh, recreation as well. Uh, we want to hear if that's an, an aspiration from you in the community. So one way to think about this is we've got this sort of progress street area and uh, potentially some bike and pedestrian infrastructure should, could be created there. And you see some of these different rectangles, you know, with places of employment and, and business. Uh, can we link to that? And can we further link to that Huckleberry Trail? If we do all those things, uh, we may, uh, and what, what is the right route? We'd like to explore that in this process. Um, because if we can do that, we can probably take some cars off the street and, and link people to recreation. Dynamism, okay? This is about business. It's about startups and entrepreneurs and some of that stuff we talked about relating to an innovation district. Um, and, and you've got some, some great uh, businesses downtown, um, and we've spoken with some of these folks, uh, and they've told us um, for recruitment, recruiting talent, and keeping uh, some of those Virginia Tech graduates he here in Blacksburg after they graduate, uh, they need downtown housing. Um, uh, they need other uh, businesses downtown. And um, uh, so, you know, housing can become a business strategy, a business development strategy, and a strategy to create uh, greater, more diverse job opportunities, which in the comp plan folks said that they wanted. We also interviewed uh, some of the uh, employees of these places a few years ago for our housing study. And yeah, more, it did sort of confirm more of them would like to, uh, live downtown um, relative to uh, folks that work in a more conventional uh, office environment. Um, here's some images from uh, Virginia Tech's um, Creativity and Innovation District plan. Um, they would like to encourage business incubation and startups and, and uh, that interface uh, uh, between the business and startup community and the university. Uh, so these are some of the things they envision, um, both on campus and, and you know, what, what could go across the street from the Creativity and Innovation District in the town. Lastly, let's think about anchors. These are things that bring people downtown. Um, and you've got some great ones, the Moss Arts Center, the Lyric, the Market Square, um, the Farmer's Market. Um, these are great amenities. What's missing? We're, we're gonna, that's a survey question. Tell us what other things you'd like to see downtown. And then you've got these parks, and um, which ones do you, are you using today? We, we kind of get a sense Henderson Lawn is, is pretty well used. The farmer's market's pretty well used. We're not so sure Wong Park and Marsh's Park are getting used a lot today. Um, could that change? What could be put there? What connections could be made to make these more uh, usable elements? Uh, is there a way to link these uh, and link businesses and link the Huckleberry Trail? Because um, these are these anchors can be great uh, unifying uh, elements and important public realm components. Okay, we talk about different types of development, community development, and place and people based in, uh, development. These places can really bring folks together. So essentially, that's our that's our presentation. That's our analysis. This, these are the things we want to share with you in terms of our initial thoughts uh, about your community, and, and we want to hear from you. Um, so um, again. Um, you know, we've talked a little bit about, we want to continue talking about what can this place be, and we talked about some growth uh, issues and opportunities, as well as town identity and uh, cost of housing. Uh, what do you want this community to be? You know, this is the beginning of that dialogue. Uh, we've provided some education. Now you need to educate us uh, and give us your feedback on these uh, things we talked about, because uh, we want to have a dialogue. And... Um, so we want to we want to hear from you all, uh, and you know advocate for the things that you uh, you care about. We we want to hear that. Um, 
the, the night of the public meeting, we had folks go to stations, we had them do uh, activities. Uh, take the survey, go online. Uh, in fact, we've got a couple of surveys. Uh, we can only be successful with your uh, active participation. Um, we, we need to know what kind of community uh, you want. So um, here's the downtown uh, strategy webpage. Uh, so, so feel free to go, to go find that online. Uh, we've got these two surveys. They'll be posted uh, for a couple of weeks. Um, please go on there and, and fill these out. We really, really want to hear from you. So again, this concludes our presentation. We'll, we'll be coming back uh, sometime in March. We'll, you know, stay tuned on the, on the website. And once we get those dates, we'll post those. Please come to the public meetings, fill out the surveys. We'll come back, start coming, coming back with some ideas and some strategies and some alternatives. We'll want to get your feedback and we'll want to survey you and get some input again uh, before we start uh, refining things and putting things into a final plan. So thank you all uh, for listening. Um, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.